Sean, after you've now gotten through the day, how would you describe and assess how everything played out and went for you and your team? Yeah, Megan, first and foremost, um, you know, these days are, are never easy, right? The, the trade deadline is one of those days that uh, it, it has an opportunity to acquire new players, tweak the team a little bit and so forth. So I look forward to those opportunities, but at the same time, you know, it comes with people leaving your Nets family and, and that's never the easiest um, for anybody. You know, I've been there myself through it, so I, I totally get it. Um, so I'd like to thank those guys first and foremost because you know, their fingerprints are all over the nets for so the time that they've been here. So from, from you know, everything they've done on the court, off the court, in the community, you name it. So uh, it's been really special to have Royce and Harry and Spencer here um, for the times they were here. And uh, they're fine young gentlemen who wish them nothing but the best. With the moves and the additions that you did make, what were some of the main priorities that you and your team focused on? Yeah, I think we go into these... Uh, days always thinking about future flexibility, try, trying to have maintain some some level of sustainability. When we're looking at, you know, how's the team look this year? How's it going to look in six months' time from now? How's it going to look in three, four years? So we're looking way down the road here for us, and you know what's fitting with our timetable, fitting with the uh, the group that we are thinking or envisioning that we'll come back this 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 next off season, and we'll bring back for Nets in a year or two from here. Um, so hopefully we accomplish some of those goals. I think we feel pretty good about it by, by adding um, you know, the, the, the players that we, that we obviously added and, and, and bringing those guys in, but at the same time um, you know, keeping some of those draft assets as well and, and, and again, that future flexibility. Obviously, uh, you know, when you're talking about a guy like Spencer that's been here for so long, uh, could you touch on A, what you're getting in Dennis and B, with Spencer outgoing, was this kind of laid in motion once you, you, know, you guys couldn't come to an agreement, I guess, on an extension or did not come to an agreement? Yeah, look, I, I don't really, I never really comment on the extension part of it. That's always behind the scenes and so forth. And, um, you know, I'll just kind of leave it at that. I, I think the focus now is, is on Dennis. And, uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's a player that we've, you know, focused on and followed for years now. And I was fortunate enough to be over and watch FIBA this off season and saw him there as well. So it's, it's great to see, um, you know, how he tried, you know, how he led Germany and what he did and he would, did for that team. So, you know, he brings a level of toughness, a compete, a grit, the things that we're looking for, um, you know, and it's, it's going to be fun to get him amongst this locker room and have these guys compete and get out there. There's currently one open roster spot uh, with the, uh, the Jordan Goodwin news. Is there any hint at what that might become? Could it be a Jalen Wilson standard conversion or are we not there yet? You know, I think that's part of just making sure we maintain that flexibility, right? And we'll, we'll see how these guys uh, come in over the next couple of weeks, couple of months, and, and how they compete for the, these spots. And I, I, like normal, we'll canvas the league and see who else is out there. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to keep our options open for now, for sure. How have you just been in, what is your, you've been made of this season so far? Obviously, not the way you expected Ben being hurt. Just kind of how would you assess where things are as you're trying to plan, plan ahead? You know, I mean, look, I think we look at our record and we say, look, we'd love to have a better record than we have right now. And, and I can sit up here and say, well, you know, the continuity of the team hasn't been there. There's been injuries, players in and out and so forth. Um, you, you know, again, we know what fits with our timetable right now, what we're looking for and what we're judging these guys on. And, and, and part of that is the moves we made, you know, at, the, at this deadline, the moves we'll be making at the draft and then into, into free agency, like, you know, who fits and, uh, you know, who can be a net long, long term here. In Royce's case with, uh, with three second rounders, is that more a case of, you picking, say, future flexibility, as you mentioned, rather than potentially more immediate help? You know, I, I think it's a little bit of both, right? You know, we know we're getting some immediate help with Dennis. You know, um, we obviously like Cater Bates, so we're excited about bringing Cater in here. We've followed him since Ohio State, so, so we know the player well. Um, but again, you know, when you're, when you're getting, you know, three future draft assets here, you know, I couldn't tell you how they're going to be used, but but that's the opportunity for me. That's the exciting piece for our group. Like, you know, you saw many of these picks being uh, thrown around and floated all over the place. You know, over the course of the last uh, you know 24 hours and 72 hours here. So that just gives us more, you know, more in our cupboard to, to use down down the road here. Now, having said that, you know, we're going to miss a player like Royce immensely. So, uh, you know, I think. Uh, uh, Phoenix knows exactly what they're getting with him. You know, again, he's he's leaving a lasting impression, 
you know, on our players, on the locker room, our coaching staff, everybody. So, um, you know, I thank him immensely for what he's done over the, over the course of his time here. You mentioned making moves that fit your, your timetable. Obviously, it's only been a year since trading two superstars, and obviously no, not the thing you set out to do, kind of just had to do. But in trying to sort through that over the course of the last year, what is the timetable for kind of like turning the corner and building back up again? Yeah, well, I think when when we first came in here, I think it was almost eight years ago, you know, we had one idea of what our timetable would look like, right? And and all of a sudden that gets sped up when, you know, you have, uh, you know, credit to our coaches, they've developed guys, and, you know, obviously we're playing against a couple of those guys tonight out there. So, you know, they develop, they speed up your timetable a little bit. And that doesn't mean you have to go all in, you know, when you go all in, but at the same time, you know, we, we had the opportunity to acquire you know the players of Kevin and Kai and James' stature. You know we're gonna we're gonna want to do that, and I would do it all over again. But at the same time, you know this time it's you know how are we developing these young guys, and, and who fits our, our timetable. You know you look at the age group of um, the guys that we have here, and you know when you're sort of in that 22 to 25, 27 year old, you know you know you've got three or four years to sit there and go, okay, it's going to be fun to see what Mikhail looks like when he gets to his prime, F fun to see what Cam looks like when he gets to his prime. So, you know, Nick Claxton, the list, list sort of goes on there. So, you know, I don't want to say, hey, we're on a three-year timetable, four-year timetable. You know, it could be far faster than that. You know, we've seen it move quicker than that in the past. Well, you mentioned, just the, that, time, like you, yeah. oh, you mentioned just the timetable part of it. Then what are, what are your expectations for this group when you look at the next 30 games, you know, wrapping up the regular season? Yeah, I think it's really important that we go out there and compete. I mean, that's that's the number one thing. I mean, our, our goal here is is to play in the postseason. I mean, that's for sure. And I'm not going to walk in that locker room and, and tell that group anything different. I think they're, they're a competitive young group, and, and they want to prove to people they can do it. So hopefully, you know, there's continuity within the roster and, and, and you know, health is a, is a number one priority, for, I think, for every team. But I think over the next 30 32 games, you know, that's what we'd love to see is competing at a high level night in and night out and seeing who rises to the occasion. Sean, when you're assessing kind of, you know, the core and who's going to be a part of this team going forward, just curious what you thought of Cam Thomas's growth this year and, and his game so far through yeah. about 50 games. Look, you know, great question, Mike. I mean, Cam has been, I don't need to tell you, you know, how, how well he's played for us. I mean, offensively, everybody talks about his ability to go out there and get a bucket and, and so forth. And, you know, I've seen all the emojis and slogans and everything all over, over the internet. But at the same time, I'm really proud of the young man that, that Cam is becoming and, and, and growing into. And you see that you know, both on and off the court. And I think Jacques mentioned the off court part of it, but you know, I'll talk a little bit about on the court. I mean, you, you see him involving his teammates, you see him making the right reads and, and, and really trying to play, you know, with his teammates out there. And I think that's, that's some growth there that we're seeing. So that's exciting to see where, where Cam can take this game. Sean, what would your message be to fans who say that they're unclear about the direction or the timetable of the franchise just one year out from the Katie and Kyrie trades? Well, I, you know, I would hope those fans, you know, again, seven or eight years ago, were sitting here going, uh, you know, they probably didn't really know what the direction was then. I have utmost faith, faith in this group, this group of players, and, and, and this, this staff to, to go out there and, and put a uh, sustainable product on the floor. I mean, that's going to be a goal here that we can compete night in and night out, something that the fans can get behind and play the right brand of basketball. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, the quote unquote Brooklyn grit all the time, right? That's what it takes to sort of survive in this borough. And, and that's the brand that we're going to have to play out there. And that's behind some of the acquisitions and some of the trades that we've made over the course of, you know, the, these, this last 24 hours. I know it's a small sample of games, but what do you make of what you've seen from Ben uh, in terms of on the court, how he came back from the injury and just sort of where he fits with this team? Yeah. I mean, look, we, we talk about the pace that Ben plays with, you know, and, and I think you, it's pretty clear to see how his uh, his teammates enjoy playing with him, right? And, and the big thing for him is going to be health. And as we as we build up his minutes and, and take off minute restrictions and so forth, um, you know, I hope, again, for the next 32 games, you, you know, you see a Ben that can go out there and really contribute at a high level and get back to back to form. But it's it's been really promising what we've seen so far. Um, what are your thoughts on the job Jock has done this year? Like you said, injuries, absences hasn't always been easy out there. No, it, it hasn't absolutely, and I, and I think that's uh, it's, it's part of coaching, right? When you never quite know who your who your roster is going to be, but I, you know, I look at how he's connecting with these guys, both on and off the court, you know, and I and I see the the sweat equity from not only Jacques but from his from his coaching staff on a, on a daily basis, and that's absolutely to be respected beyond belief. And then uh, you know, he's giving it all. He's giving it everything he can and 
you know, he never knows who, who's, who's he got for tonight's game, let alone, you know, we, we just took a couple of players from tonight. So um, he knows what's at stake. I think we all do here. You know, our, our jobs are, are here to go and put a sustainable product on the floor and, and give the fan base uh, something to cheer and root for.